Hello, welcome back to Battle Brothers. I'm Jade Star here again, once again, with Olish. Oh, fine. Don't let me introduce myself. No, I because you're back, and it was previously Dev who sounded kind of Australian when I tried to pronounce. I was his gonna name. pretend to be Dev. Oh, really? Shit. No, I can't do that. I don't think you really could do that to begin with. You don't. You no, don't sound... no, I couldn't. But that wouldn't stop me from trying. <laughs> 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 so, right, uh, so, welcome back, Olish. Cricket camp in in swampy asshole. Well, it's it. Not exactly the swamp, actually. It's the hills. Um, I called it a swampy asshole just because it, the the shack is called like the rotten hut, so I yeah. expected it. To, whatever. But no, uh, we have a kind of a weird valley thing here with hills on the top and the bottom of us, and some bumps in the middle. A strange uh, format. Well, you've got some nice varied terrain that you can maybe take advantage of. Yeah, the middle is going to be a little bit weird, because whoever moves into that, like, dip between the two high ground pieces is probably going to lose. Oh man, look at that brigand leader in the back. Look at that nice, heavyish armor. That I'm totally not going to hubris. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> look at this archer who thought it would be a good idea to get in front of his uh, lightning. You know, I have to say, I appreciate, like, the, the damage that, you know, like, as you beat someone up, you know, they look more and more bloodied. Yeah. But that's not what an arrow wound looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he took a slash across the bridge of the nose and the cheek. There's really too much, uh, bone in the, uh, in the skull region for an arrow wound to look like that. Or to do anything like that. Arrow's trying to just go in and stick. I mean, you, you can't get the grazing shots. Yeah, that's true. That'd be a hell of a grazing shot, you know, vertically across his face. <laughs> I mean, that arrow would have had to make, like, a 90 degree turn as it struck his nose and cheek. Trying to imagine the, the uh, that episode of Seinfeld where they're discussing like the the loogie that somebody threw at a, a MLB. Game. I don't remember it very well, but I remember kind of like breaking it down like some fucking magic loogie hugging 90 degree turns around the guy. And I didn't think they'd uh, hold back so much, but they do. I have what five archers to my three. I mean, they're about to have four, because fuck that guy in the middle. Yeah, I mean, they have, or they think they have the archer advantage, so why not? This is pretty much what the brigand AI tends to do. Yeah, and it's not wrong for trying it. It's also got a couple guys with javelins. But my front line being full of people with kite shields and the oh. exception of, oh, headshot, travel log, uh, with anticipation and some good stats, they're not going to find any easy marks to hit. So I'm happy to let them waste their stamina throwing stuff at us. Ah. Also, bring a shield, you dumb assholes. That one marksman, though, surrounded by like three trees, is just a giant jerk. Really hard to hit? Yeah, because it's got the, the cover bonuses. Now you've got me doing it too. Doing what? I, you're you damn psychosomatic root beer burp. <laughs> but it goes away every time we start recording. It's just like, oh, I'm about to start recording. You better just like have all of this like burp and gas, and then as soon as we start recording, it's fine. I thought you had no, like, I'll, I'll, psychos... I'll have to actually record that one of these days. <laughs> just, just the the pre-recording burps. Oh man. It's actually a little impressive. <laughs> Just with how consistent it is. Uh, I mean, you've got your own pre recording ritual of bathing. That's, that just doesn't, like, show up on video. I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. That asshole. Ooh, that asshole. So, uh, that's gonna be an important thing that just happened for this fight, and a kind of a tipping point. Well, not really a tipping point, that's probably overstating it, but, um, 
getting a pierced leg muscle always fucking sucks. Because that really cuts into your defensive ability. That's negative 25% melee skill. Yeah. That really blows. And then I'm going to kind of follow that up thinking it's not so bad. Or thinking I can anticipate where Bajarn the bloody the leader is going to be. So I don't commit Mo or Travelog because I want them to be able to take one step and then attack. They don't have the AP to take two steps and attack. But I probably should have based the Raven leader. Look at these dumb assholes shooting my archers. Because he's just going to turn and... And attack the dude with the pierced leg now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Napster. Oh, thank god, that one didn't hit it, too. But he's my only guy with a cleaver, so Napster's easy to point out. I really wish I could get more use out of Napster, but I keep getting him injured. But I really do love cleavers. Uh, I don't know if it's just the sound design or the bleed damage. It just feels so good to use. Ooh. Ow. Okay, not so bad. Armor's holding up, though. He is somewhat surrounded right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, thankfully he has the high ground from everyone except uh, the leader, but he's got pierced leg muscles and is surrounded, and it's not great. Uh, you may have noticed I delayed my turn with the archer core. I've got plans for them. I've got some hot plays. Uh, because fuck that crossbowman in particular. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is he about to be fighting in the shade? <laughs> oh, that is the plan, yeah. Ah, oh, man. Rail is so good. Rail is Pozo, Zax, Rail for short, because goddammit, guys. Okay. So this raider is almost dead. There he goes. And now, there's no longer anything a living between their crossbowmen and my three archers to obstruct the shot. Gonna have Napster shield wall indefinitely until we get him out of there. Now be careful. Don't do the two. Don't hit two tiles. I know they're perfectly lined up. <laughs> no, not gonna do that. Uh, also, I think was uh, Skippy freaking missing this guy. Eh, eh. God damn it, guys! I had this great plan of having the melee is clear path, but whatever. We got his shoulder. Uh, injured shoulder is also a pretty good injury to inflict on the enemy, and it decreases the damage to by 25%, so it's really nice for keeping your dudes alive. I wonder if that's before armor taken into account. I would assume so. Yeah, I think that would just be raw. Oh, my shield. I need that. Excuse me. I'm gonna knock that out. Now, okay, so now Napster's in a bit of trouble. He's based up by two people. Uh, the leader got a little piece. <laughs> I mean, everywhere else the fight's going great. Shin just brained that dude. And then look at this asshole. I just shield smashed him with a friggin' maul. And he's like, nah, my, my shitty fucking wood shield's still here. Well, maybe he's got shield expert. I, he asked him. There is absolutely no other alternative for why that shield is still there. Then watch this. I'm like, alright, fine. Shield sm son of a bitch. Oh man, I love Rail. He's so good. But you know who else is really making themselves known on the battlefield today? It's that dog in Mr. Yar's inventory. <laughs> we didn't really name it because we got it through the uh, the event. It's just called Battle Brother, but uh, yeah. No, clearly it's Eric. I mean, that's its name. It's, it's BB. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, that, that's like the uh, the dog short, from short Metal Gear. Short for Diamond Fox. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, that's the key Diamond Dog. <laughs> Sometimes he's still using a friggin' Morningstar. Alright, Napster, please. Oh no, it's worse than I thought. It's negative 30 melee skill. Ugh, that Pierce Lake must suck so much. At least he seems to be in high spirits. Uh, he's actually waiting a little bit. He's not flipping out. 
Because right. if he tried to flee, he'd probably die. Yeah. It's okay though. Oh god, no. Oh shit. Okay, uh... Shit. Okay, we're gonna have to abandon Operation Hubris. The He's in too much danger. Finally get rid of that shield, though. This was a little bit risky. Rail kind of lost his shield, but we're gonna go charge that goddamn crossbowman. It'd be a little bit less risky if you could actually have reached that. Yeah. Well, it just got a lot safer. <laughs> yeah, it did. There we go. Thank you, Flesnolk. Uh, that takes a lot of uh, pressure off of Navster. Could stab the leader, or I could try to rally Nestor just to get that extra five percent melee skill back because I really don't want him to die. I want him to have all of the defense he can have. By the way, did I say I was abandoning Operation Huberus because I lied? No, it's fine though. That routed him. Yeah. I mean, I still want Nestor the hell out of there. Yeah, the guy would be a... Stab him and die. Oof. That was like a 24% chance of that arrow killing Nadster right there. I love that one. I was just the head flying off and then falling in the pit. It was great. Oh, you bastard. Yeah, he used the secondary on the maze. Good morning, Star. Yeah. Also, Brigham's still thinking it's a good idea not to wear helmets anywhere in the vicinity of Shinerado. Might have been checking for a dagger on Arturo to start. <laughs> yeah, I figured that's what that was. <laughs> but I didn't properly surround him. And hey, remember this? This is still happening. Oh, right, yeah. I kind of forgot that that's a thing that happens now. Yeah. That seems like a thing that shouldn't just be happening. Goddamn brigand leaders and their nine lives trait. Well, it makes it really easy to finish Hubris and him down. <laughs> yeah, but his body armor is completely destroyed. Uh, the helmet is pretty nice, though. <laughs> Most of our fighters that have been around a long time are starting to get to the point where I'm running out of, like, imperative picks for them. And, oh, also stats. Uh, so, Brawny is becoming more and more uh, of an appealing choice for a weak pick, so that I can start giving people heavy armor. Yeah. I mean, Brawny is basically, like, an obvious pick anyways. <clears throat> if you're just reducing the amount of weight your armor carries. If, if you need a certain amount of stamina, taking Brawny just lets you wear heavier armor. Yeah. Everybody benefits from that. It's just that the benefit of Brawny is dependent on the weight of your gear, so you benefit more from it the heavier the stuff you wear, which is usually more expensive. So, typically Brawny comes oh, yeah. into being a larger benefit later in the campaign. It's, it's not useful when you've got well, rather it's, it's less useful when you have shittier. Yeah. It's like the I mean, third-person Shin's Dome. The, the heaviest stuff 
is almost too heavy to actually usefully use. Even with body. Some of it gets up to, what, like 30, 40 fatigue? Yeah, I mean, plus the weapon, plus maybe the shield, your helmet too. Yeah. You're just a wall of iron at that point. Without the ability to actually have stamina to spend, it's just not. Second, I was wondering why his body went over time, but yeah, because one body per time. Yeah. Let's see, yeah, okay, the last live one died, so now we're just fighting the zombie versions of these guys. Glad this is gonna be a thing we're gonna deal with from now on. It's just fighter gangers. It's armored fighter gangers. It's true, but. Presumably, they're not any more dangerous than regular weapons. I guess they might have better. I mean, yeah. That's really the only difference between armored weapons and white gangers is that armored ones tend to actually carry real weapons and sometimes armor. I haven't been paying close enough attention, but I'm assuming that they're the same stuff. That they died with? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, like, that one up on the hill up there is carrying a shitty knight because that was the archer that died. And I've never seen a wider ginger use a bow. So, it just picked up that, uh, Brigand Marksman's. Yeah, that Brigand Marksman's secondary weapon. I imagine zombies would make really shitty archers. Yeah. Yep, see, like, uh, Bjorn's back. Oh, and there's bloody Bjorn. Yeah. And they keep their armor stats too, so he doesn't have any body armor since we already beat it off of him. Right. Damn it, Travelog, you hit him in the head. I do wish there was some sort of perk that would be like if target has zero body armor and you rolled a headshot, instead roll a body shot. Like the reverse headhunter thing, but conditionally. I mean, it, it's the sort of thing that, without like a pop-up, how would you really know whether or not you'd want to use it? If body armor Unless equals it, zero and head armor well, right, does but, not equal zero? But, like, say for example that you don't really care about, like, you, how do you know that you don't want that extra headshot damage? Because in some cases, it's probably going to be more damage to hit them in the head anyways. Yeah, I mean, sure, if they had, like, a really shit helmet, sure, but... Especially when it's, like, fresh helmet versus no body armor, just, like, stop aiming for the head, guys. Just body shot. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a computer game, so... Of course, the algorithm that does damage could figure out which of the two alternatives would actually do the most HP damage, and then make that pick for you. Yeah, you'd have to actually see the 10 map structure. Yeah. 221 damage, that's... Armor and HP. Yeah, I know, but that's still... Basically, the only damage that you took. It's more than twice the rest of the... I mean... The company combined. Our Charo took one to the face. Yeah, I mean, that was only 74. Uh, some decent... Hey, we got the helmet. It's nice. nice. It's nice, but it's it's really heavy. But I mean, that's that's the sort of gear we're gonna start wanting to put on people that have brawny. Uh, so this was a was a tough fight. I'm I'm really glad we kept Napster alive. Uh, continuing to deal with the undead is a giant pain in the ass. But uh, mission complete, and thank you all for joining us. We'll see you in the next video.